Hello, welcome back. We're here today with a brand new Rivian R1T. We're gonna do the DC fast charge recording and analysis video. Now this guy's got 135 kilowatt hour battery pack, a huge pack, but believe it or not, Rivian's gonna be making a larger pack in about a year. So they call this the large pack and then there's a max pack. This has an EPA range rating of 314 miles. The R1T with the max pack is gonna have an EPA range rating of over 400 miles. But we have the large pack today and of that, 135 kilowatt hour. I just drained 125 kilowatt hour from 100% charge down to zero. Now the 135 is the total pack capacity and I just did the inside EV 70 mile an hour highway range test with this guy and I drove it from 100% down to zero and beyond. I even drove it a couple miles past zero to the point where it really doesn't want to even move anymore. So now we're going to do a really full zero to 100% DC fast charge recording here on this Electrify America 350 kilowatt DC fast charger and analyze the results. But first, don't forget, please click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. All right, before we jump into the DC fast charge recording, I wanna mention that while DC fast charging is the fastest way to recharge your Rivian R1T, and quite honestly, the only way to do it when you're on the road and doing a road trip, for daily charging, most R1T owners are gonna to wanna to charge their vehicle at home. It's the most convenient and least expensive way to recharge your electric vehicle. It would cost me about $19 to fully recharge the R1T from my home. Now we're gonna take a look at the cost to recharge it during this DC fast charging session in a few minutes, but cost isn't the only reason. It's just so much more convenient to charge your EV at home. You plug it in when you get home at night, every morning you wake up with a full battery. And when you do, you wanna have the right charging equipment. The R1T can accept up to 11.5 kilowatt when you're charging at home. That's level two charging, 240 volt. So you would wanna get a 48 amp home charging station to be able to charge the R1T as fast as it can charge. 48 amp charging stations have to be hardwired. According to NEC code, you can't use a plug-in device if it delivers more than 40 amps continuous. So you're gonna to wanna to have it hardwired. And when you do, you have to make sure that you hire a licensed, insured, qualified electrician. It's not a job for the weekend warriors to do on their own at home. Electric vehicle home charging equipment really needs to be done by a professional. And it's one of the reasons why I've partnered with Qmerit. Qmerit is the nation's leading installer of electric vehicle charging equipment and home energy storage. So if you're looking for an installer for your home EV charging equipment, follow the link in the description of this video and Qmerit will give you a free no-hassle estimate. Right out of the box, the R1T is ripping it and pulling 192 kilowatt after only one minute of charging. After three minutes, it reaches 200 kilowatt. And after only 10 minutes of charging, we're already at 20% state of charge, and we've hit the peak charging rate that we'll see of 207 kilowatt. Note that this station has delivered 35 kilowatt hour in just 10 minutes. But that's when the R1T starts limiting power. And five minutes later, after 15 minutes of charging, we're at 29% state of charge, and we're now taking in 170 kilowatt. After 20 minutes of charging, we're at 39% state of charge, and the R1T is now accepting 162 kilowatt, still a very good charge rate, especially for a 400 volt battery system. Now, five minutes later, the R1T is accepting 126 kilowatt, and the vehicle is at 48% state of charge. It takes two more minutes to reach 50% state of charge, and that happens after 27 minutes of charging. After a half an hour of charging, the R1T is at 56% state of charge. The charging station has now delivered 85 kilowatt hour. Those are some pretty good stats. Now the R1T continues to charge at above 115 kilowatt until about 65% state of charge. That's when we see another slow ramp down. And by the 40 minute mark, we're now accepting 103 kilowatt and the R1T is at 70% state of charge. 
We dip under 100 kilowatt for the first time after 41 minutes of charging and the state of charge is at 72%. I'm going to stop the video here for a minute because I finally realized if I open the frunk, I may reduce some sun glare on the screen and it actually worked really well. Sorry I didn't think to do this right from the beginning. After 45 minutes of charging, the R1T is at 77% state of charge and we're now pulling in 81 kilowatt. We hit 80% state of charge in 48 minutes and the charge rate is now only 52 kilowatt. With such a large battery pack, we do think the R1T can do it a little bit better and hopefully Rivian's engineers are gonna work on that and improve this in the future. From here on out, it's pretty slow going, so I'm gonna speed things up a little bit more. However, I wanna stop at the 60 minute mark to point out that the charging station has now delivered 125 kilowatt hour. That gives the charging session an average of 125 kilowatt for a full hour of charging, and that's pretty good. The R1T hits 90% state of charge in an hour and three minutes, and it takes an hour and 15 minutes to reach 95% state of charge. By now, the charging rate is a paltry 24 kilowatt. If you do have an R1T, you really don't wanna be charging at a DC fast charger past 90% because it's just not an effective use of your time unless you absolutely need every mile you can squeeze out to make your next stop. It takes 32 minutes to go from 90% to full, which happens in an hour and 35 minutes of charging. Now you may have noticed that the station says it shut off at 99% state of charge, but inside the R1T, it did say 100% charged on the screen. So let's take a closer look at the charging session summary. At the top here, you could see that the station dispensed 140 kilowatt hour. Now the R1T has 135 kilowatt hour battery pack, but of that, only about 125 kilowatt hour is usable. We talked about that earlier in this video. So if we put 125 kilowatt hour back in the pack, that means 15 kilowatt hour or 12% were charging losses. And compared to some of the other electric vehicles we've DC fast charged, that's a completely normal percentage for losses. If you take a look on the side here, it costs us $46.28 to completely refill the Rivian R1T on this Electrify America 350 kilowatt DC fast charge station. And that's with my Electrify America Pass Plus membership. So I do get a discount. If you don't have the Pass Plus membership, as you can see down here, you'd pay an extra $17.91. Now it costs $4 a month to be a Pass Plus member. And if you plan on using the Electrify America network, as you can see here, if you just use it once to fully charge the battery, that covers the cost of four months of membership fees. So if you are gonna use that network, it makes sense to be a Pass Plus member. All right, well, that went pretty well. Now let's take a look at it on paper because I've mapped out that whole charging session on my charging power chart. And at the end, I even throw in a little comparison to the Ford F-150 Lightning's DC fast charging capability. The R1T starts off great and pulls over 200 kilowatt until about 22% state of charge. And two minutes later, the charge rate is now down to 170 kilowatt. It holds more than 150 kilowatt until 45% state of charge. And that gives us a really good start as it took us only 23 minutes to go from flat to 45% state of charge. And over that period, we averaged 183 kilowatt. Now from there, the R1T bounces between 115 and 120 kilowatt, all the way up to 67% state of charge. When we see the charge rate start to take some pretty big drops here. Now up until about 75% state of charge, the R1T has been charging like a champ. But after that, we'd like to see Rivian do a little bit better here. We know that the charging rate's gonna have to drop off after 75% state of charge. It does that with all electric vehicles. But from that point up till about 85% state of charge, there's definitely some room for improvement. But overall, this is a pretty good charging curve. Rivian engineers did an excellent job so far, and there's no reason to believe that they won't be making incremental improvements to this in the future as they get more data from the fleet. I'd like to take a look at how long it took to charge from 15% to 80%. That happened in 40 minutes. I'm mentioning this specifically because Ford published their specifications saying that the extended range battery pack F-150 Lightning will charge from 15% to 80% in 41 minutes. However, the Lightning's maximum charge rate is only a little over 150 kilowatt, nearly 25% less than that of the R1Ts. 
Now, I've seen a lot of people complain in different forums and in online groups that the charge rate for the F-150 Lightning is too low for a truck with a battery that has a usable capacity of 131 kilowatt hour, which is slightly larger than the R1Ts. Now they point out that the R1T will charge so much faster because it can charge at over 200 kilowatt. But the charging curve is actually even more important than the maximum charging rate. So you can see here, the R1T doesn't charge from 15 to 80% any better than the Lightning does. It's actually a dead on tie. Now, while the R1T does do it a minute quicker, the Lightning's battery has six more kilowatt hour of usable capacity. So that eliminates the one minute advantage that the R1T has. However, I do need to point out that the charging curve you see for the Lightning up here on the graph is my estimated charging curve that I based on data that Ford gave me. So the charging curve itself might be slightly different. However, that doesn't change the fact that Ford states that the 15 to 80% charging time is 41 minutes. So it doesn't really matter if my estimated charging curve is slightly off. Well, that was pretty interesting, right? Even though the maximum charge rate on the R1T is so much higher than the Ford F-150 Lightning, they really charge at basically the same rate from 15% to 80% state of charge. That was really interesting. All right, next up now, we're gonna take a look at the time to charge chart because while charging curves are really fun for like data geeks like me and probably a lot of my followers, what most people are really just interested in is how long do I have to stay there when I plug in to get to a certain state of charge? And the time to charge chart helps you figure that out. So let's take a look at it now. As I mentioned earlier, the most aggressive part of the charging curve happens from zero up to about 45% state of charge. As you can see, this section has the greatest vertical climb. After that, the curve starts to flatten out and becomes more horizontal, which means more minutes to add back battery percentage. So to give people an idea of about how many miles are added over time, I broke this charging session up into three equal parts, roughly 32 minutes each. On the first 32 minute section, we add back 59% state of charge. Now that's 185 miles of EPA rated range based on the 314 mile EPA range rating. Now in the second 32 minute block, we add back 31% state of charge, almost half. And that's equal to 97 miles of EPA rated range. Now take a look at that last third of the charging session. We only add back 10%, which is about 31 miles of driving range. Now after that second third of the charging session, we're up to 90% state of charge. So as you can see here, you really don't want to be hanging out at a DC fast charger after the vehicle's already at 90% state of charge because it takes so long to add back miles. Compare that first section to the last section, it's six times as fast. So unless you absolutely need those extra miles, you really want to unplug and move on once you get somewhere around 85 or 90% state of charge. And the last thing we want to add is how many EPA rated miles of range is added for every minute of charging in each one of these three sections. In the first third of charging, we added 5.75 miles for every minute of charging. In the second section, 3.03 miles per minute. And the final third of charging, we added only one mile of EPA rated range for every minute we were charging. To put that into perspective, that's a slower charging rate than what you add back to the battery when you're charging from a simple 120 volt household outlet. Well, you can see there that the R1T charges like a champ in the beginning, kind of tapers off in the middle, and at the end, it's really slow. So you don't wanna be wasting your time in a DC fast charger unless you really need to. I also thought it was super interesting to check out the comparison with the F-150 Lightning that we did earlier in the video. Now I have an F-150 Lightning on order. I'm supposed to get it in a couple of weeks. And I'm gonna do a lot of DC fast charge recordings. And what I'm gonna then do is put out a video that does a really deep in-depth comparison between the R1T charging and Ford F-150 Lightning charging. Now I mentioned in the video, the charging curve that I put up there was an estimate that I put together from charging data that Ford sent me. I think it's gonna be very close to what I find when I get my F-150 Lightning but I have to mention it is an estimate, so it could be different. But once I get mine, I'm gonna map out the whole charging curve and I'm gonna make a separate video 
That's just comparing the R1T and the F-150 Lightning's charging. And then I also have an R1T on order. I'm not supposed to get it till the end of 2022. That's my delivery window estimate from Rivian. But there's gonna be a period of time where I own both vehicles, the F-150 Lightning and the Rivian R1T. I'm gonna be able to put together a lot of really cool comparison video content. Well, that's it for today. I hope you found this video interesting. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. Thanks for watching.